Bro, you are literally playing support. Your opinion does not matter. All you have to do is right click. Top lane is a brainless role that nobody cares about. I'm sure we've all heard these things, but maybe it's time that we talk about them. What's going on summoners? My name is Kellen or Exil, and today welcome back to another Pro Guides video. In this one, we are going to be ranking every single role from hardest to easiest. That's right, we are going to go there. Ever had a fight with your friends over whose role is harder? Well, today we are here to answer all the big questions. This video will be split into three sections as it's a pretty difficult question to answer. We'll be answering this question for players in low elo from iron all the way up to platinum, high elo, which is diamond and above, and finally professional play, which speaks for itself. But for today's question of the day, which role do you think needs buffs in general? Now, me personally, I am a top laner, so I'm not going to say top lane. I actually think that ADC is kind of a lame role at the moment. Not that there are no good ADC champions, I just feel like at this point in time, it's not exactly fun to play that role, and I wish it could be tuned up in a little bit of a better way. I wish certain champions like Heimerdinger weren't so oppressive, Cassiopeia bot lane wasn't so oppressive, and I wish certain lane bullies that we've had in the past, maybe something like a Draven or even a Caitlyn to some extent after they did those bug fixes, could actually bully their lane, and I still feel like some of the supports are just too OP. But that's just my opinion, and I do want to know your guys' thoughts, so make sure to comment with your answers down below. By the way guys, I want you to check out ProGuides.com if you haven't already. For those who are serious about getting better this season and climbing through the ranks, you will need to check it out. We have a bunch of content over there as well as some great coaches who are willing to help you guys out. So with all that being said, check out ProGuides.com and let's start the video. First up, let's talk about the majority of players. Now, it sucks to admit, but most of us are not Challenger or even Diamond. This is the list that is relevant to most players, as League's player base primarily is going to consist of players from Iron all the way up to Gold or even Platinum. Just to clarify, the roles that come up first are the harder ones, while the ones that we will mention last are the easier ones. For our ranking of the roles, it will be Bottom, Support, Jungle, Mid, and then finally Top Lane. Our analysts have put a good amount of thought into this, so let's go ahead and break it down. First, why is bottom lane the hardest role to play in low elo? Well, let me put it simply. Do you really trust your teammate Vayne to 1v9 for you in bronze? It's a pretty risky investment if you ask me, and I would highly advise against it. Aside from the random smurf here and there, I'd anticipate that I'd have to, once again, do my fair share of Vayne spotting. Bot laners really struggle to carry their games in low elo for a variety of reasons. The most obvious reason is champion pool. It just goes without saying that a lot of bot laners are not well suited to carry lower elo games. They're squishy but deal a lot of damage. You need a team that understands when to play around you and you also need to be pretty good at the game yourself. In reality, a lot of players in low elo are there for a variety of reasons, including the fact that they're still developing mechanics. At the moment, a marksman steps out of line once, and they get one shot. That's just how things go right now in League of Legends, and players who are lower elo and in lower rank are going to make a lot more mistakes. When you're trying to hard carry a game, it's very difficult when literally everyone on the enemy team can delete you from the game. It will be a lot easier to be the person that's one-shotting their enemies instead, and guess what? A Garen can do that on top of being tanky. The next hardest role to play will be support. While the act of carrying games as a support can prove to be more difficult, doing your job and playing to your limits is a tad bit easier than it is with marksmen. Overall though, both bot laners have a pretty hard time carrying games in low elo, and in other words, the gap between them is very small, almost non-existent even. Of course, supports are very tanky, so you can make more mistakes and get away with it. Take for example the four most popular supports in Silver on patch 10.4, which are Thresh, Nautilus, Leona, and Blitzcrank. They are comprised over a million games played, and these are the most popular champions for support. The sample size is definitely large enough to analyze, and aside from Thresh, they all held positive win rates. Thinking about what these champions do, it's very easy to recognize the one thing they all have in common is that they punish mistakes very well. Unlike their lane partners, they typically have a ton of semi-reliable crowd control and definitely are not squishy. In a way that supports also have impact on games, bot laners have the direct opposite impact. As a support, you are looking for your opponent's mistakes, whereas as an ADC, you're trying to avoid as many mistakes as possible. Sorry to sound like a broken record, but we all know that in lower elo, mistakes are more prevalent. In the middle of the pack for low elo is jungle. 
Junglers are able to capitalize heavily on overextended enemies, and players often open themselves up for ganks much more often in lower elo. The downside to this is that the flame you get while playing the role. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no one is going to be happy with you. Unfortunately, part of winning in League of Legends involves micromanaging your teammates' mental states. A big reason why it's so hard to win as a jungler in lower elo is that players get very mad when you don't gank their lane. They get tilted, they start playing worse, maybe they even int, and there's nothing you can do about it. The bright side is that this is a two-way street. Successful ganks will have the opposite effect destroying the morale of the enemy players, and overall junglers have a very volatile time in lower elo. It can be easy to 1v9 your game since you're able to impact the map, but at the same time, if you can't stop your teammates from running it down, it can be really tough to win. Mid laners are in a pretty good place to carry their games in low elo. The reality of the situation is that there's almost never going to be a point where every role is created equally. Essentially, mid lane is one of the strongest roles because like junglers, they have easy access to the rest of their team. Side laners have a hard time impacting the game on the opposite side of the map. However, mid laners always have a choice. They can choose to play for themselves or to support any of their teammates. On top of that, mid lane assassins are especially powerful in low elo because they're easily able to get kills in snowball. Both in and out of lane, there's many opportunities to pick up kills as a mid laner, and that's not even just limited to assassins either. In general, low elo marks a haven to pick up a million solo kills and a bunch of different random kills, both of which mid laners and lower elo can take advantage of. When fed, mid laners have many different ways that they can snowball their leads. You have so many different kinds of champions that can carry. Assassins who can one-shot and are mobile, mages who can make picks with crowd control, or even tankier champions that can flex into the role. While it might come as a surprise, top lane is by far the easiest role to play in lower elo. What it comes down to is that the champions that are very popular are great. Juggernauts and a lot of bruisers are not mechanically demanding by any means. In spite of this, they're also really good at what they do. Juggernauts struggle because they lack mobility, but when players aren't as well developed yet, they will not be able to be punished for this weakness. Think about the top lane for a second. Champions like Garen, Darius, Orn, and Set are dominant forces around gold and platinum for a reason. Especially when playing Juggernauts, they can easily take over games because players just don't know how to deal with them. Garen is the best example. You click on someone as Garen, you spin on them after, and you win the game because of it. This is not the case every single time, but to be honest, it's pretty true. Players also struggle to deal with split pushing in lower elo, so that's why you see champions like Jax and Trindamir late game just mindlessly running it down a lane and eventually win by taking the enemy nexus. Once you get to high elo, things will start to change pretty drastically. Once you hit diamond, the game will change quite significantly, and our order of roles for high elo goes as follows. Top, jungle, mid, support, and bottom. Pulling a complete 180 from low elo, and high elo playing top is very difficult, especially given the current state of things. Top laners struggle to impact games and often need to carry games by somehow ending up in the bottom lane. While this isn't objectively a bad thing, it still does illustrate that top laners struggle to impact the games on their own terms. It's often easier for them to let someone else win the game for them. In other words, they are better off indirectly carrying games by giving somebody else an opportunity to do so. Overall, players prioritize Dragon over Rift Herald, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing either, as an Ocean Dragon or a Dragon Soul that synergizes well with your team can easily be much more valuable than a single Rift Herald in many situations. Riot's done a good job of giving Rift Herald more power, but players still tend to prioritize Dragon over it quite a bit. The current state of the top lane is being looked into, so there's a good chance that in the next couple of patches, this could completely change, but for now, this is what we deal with. The other reason why the role becomes much harder in high elo is because macro knowledge is increased significantly over low elo. You need to be much more aware of the state of the waves, and winning a single 1v1 in the mid to late game can change the tide of the game altogether. Since top laners tend to run teleport, they're usually tasked with handling a side lane, and there's a lot of prerequisite knowledge to do this successfully. Jungling also becomes much more difficult in high elo. There's a couple reasons for this. The first one is obvious. You need to know more about the game. You have to understand where your priorities should lie, and what's the most optimal pathing for your champion, and what's the most optimal pathing for your opponent as well. The second reason is that no matter how much you know, it's likely that your opponent also has that same knowledge. It's much easier to play a competitive game when your opponent is completely clueless. Imagine playing chess against someone that doesn't know all the rules of the game. Well, that's how low elo feels sometimes. There's so many things you can get away with and so many free handouts. However, the higher and higher you climb, the less and less you get to get away with. 
Mid lane begins to get harder as you climb higher up as well. Overall, it's still one of the strongest roles in the game, but that's ironically why it becomes difficult. Ever see someone type mid diff in all chat? Well, it's pretty real. The stakes are much higher. A winning mid lane has so much impact over the game that playing well isn't the only thing that matters anymore. You also need to make sure that you don't play poorly. The emphasis on this latter point becomes higher because you also cannot get wrecked in mid lane as a mid laner because your entire team will suffer. Your opponent knows what to do with the lead. If you're in high elo, you probably know how to 1v9 while fed, but so does your lane opponent. Once again, you'll have to have a very deep understanding of the game, especially the way that the lanes will play out. Mid laners play a huge role in how the early game plays out, and they need to know what the best play is for them in every single one of their games. There's a reason why people always talk about that mid and jungle synergy and moving together. Well, it's very real and high low and very important. Playing support in higher elo feels like you've finally been freed from your chains, just like Silas. They're able to do so many more things and play a better vision game than their opponent, and it finally will make a real difference. Support players in high elo fight for every inch of vision they can take. There's a lot more intricacy behind this than in low elo, where you just throw wards down wherever you want and work with it. Macro play also becomes something you can work with and deal with. Sometimes you gotta leave your lane, and that's a fact. But in high elo, it's basically an expectation that you do this in some of your games. Understanding when you need to also requires a lot of experience. Your role during teamfights also matters a lot more as well. Landing a single ability changes everything, whether it's saving your carry from a certain death, or because you made that clutch pick to win the game. The fact that supports have much more impact also makes the role easier to play, especially when you compare it to low elo. Alright, so how did bot lane go from the hardest to the easiest? While mechanically the role is still very difficult, you have the most linear decisions to make as a bottom laner. Since you're almost always a major damage source for your team, and because your job is always just scale scale scale, you're going to be farming a lot. When someone has to lead the lane to roam, that's not your job. That's your support's job. During the laning phase and during the early game, the hardest decisions you'll have to make is backing off of your turret to avoid a dive, or roaming together with your support because there's nothing you can do in lane. You're basically stuck farming for a huge part of the game because that's your job. Whether you have one or two members of your team pushing other lanes, you're always going to be left to assist to clear waves somewhere else. Usually you're going to have two or three teammates with you anyway, so it's pretty clear where you need to be almost all of the time. The decision making process is very linear for ADCs, and that's why it becomes much easier. All right, let's wrap it up by talking about pro play. At the highest level of play, everyone needs to have a deep understanding of macro play. Finally, in professional play, the difficulty of roles goes like this. Mid, bot, support, jungle, and top. For mid and bot, micro play is going to add a lot of value and a lot of depth to a player, and that's why mid and bot lane are the hardest roles to play at the professional level. Any single mistake, no matter how small, could end up costing a game or even a series. All of these hours of practice really come into play with these roles. Champions in these roles tend to deal the most damage, have high skill ceilings, and therefore require the most mechanically gifted players. Do you ever see a mage, some kind of rise in professional play, get caught out and die and lose the game for his team? Do you ever see an Ezreal E forward? Well, there's a reason for that. It's because there's such a stressful situation trying to play these champions and playing mid and bot lane at the professional level, and so much is expected of you at a micro and macro level that it becomes very difficult. The final three roles, while ordered, are all about equal in difficulty. No matter how much harder or easier the subsequent role is, it's not by too much. The requirements of all of these roles remain the same in professional play. Junglers and supports heavily dictate the vision game for their team. They need to communicate well with their teams through a variety of reasons, and there's a ton of questions that they need to ask and process through. What resources do their teammates want or need? Is it right to give them these resources? How should they prepare for the next objective, and what plays do they need to make next? Junglers and support players move around a lot more in professional play, but the three other roles typically need to spend a lot more time tied to their respective lanes. Top laners typically have a very straightforward role that everyone understands. They're going to spend the most time in side lanes, continue to manage those waves and create pressure, and of any role, top laners spend the least amount of time with their teammates as their role lies elsewhere. Don't get me wrong, winning your lane in a side lane or smashing top lane on some kind of carry champion is very great, but overall in competitive play for the last three to four years, it's basically a tank versus a tank every single game. They sit back, they farm, and don't allow themselves to get randomly solo killed. As a result of this, top laners end up spending a lot of their time just farming. Not that you can't be outclassed top lane, and not that there aren't amazing top laners in the world like the Shy. It just comes down to the fact that that doesn't necessarily lead to the biggest outcome in the game. 
Anyway, that's going to conclude this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure that if you haven't already, check out ProGuides.com as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive daily updates. We're always here uploading brand new content focused on improving your gameplay, so check it out. Also, make sure to leave any feedback or comments down below. And until next time, best of luck on the Rifts.